I want to be a producer with a hit show on Broadway. I want to be a producer. Hey everybody, in case you missed it, we unveiled a new section of the website last week, the Producers Perspective Pro. Has all sorts of cool stuff for people like you that are looking to take their shows to the next level. Check it out. Training modules, labels for mailings, and a free webinar every month with me, including one this coming Wednesday about how to raise that holy grail of capital, front money. The Producers Perspective Pro. Check it out on the blog. And now on with the podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Or if this is your first time here, welcome to the Producers Perspective podcast. I am Ken Davenport. And today I'm happy to have as my guest... Tony Award-winning choreographer Christopher Gatelli. Welcome, Chris. Thank you so much, Ken. So Chris won his Tony for the incredible athletic choreography in Newsies, also nominated for his work in South Pacific, and he choreographed King and I, Amazing Grace, Off-Broadway's Bat Boy with the most inspired Lion King bit ever. Uh, And I've been fortunate enough to work with him three times on 13, Godspell, and Alter Boys. He's one of the first names thought of when any producer out there today is considering hiring a choreographer for a new musical. He's doing more and more directing, uh, including that surprise hit of a few years ago, Silence the Musical, which was hysterical. Uh, So, Chris, let's uh, go back a few years. How did you get started in the business in general? Uh, In general, I think I I was uh, started as a performer and uh, did... My first thing in the city was Radio City Music Hall Christmas Spectacular. You were a rocket. Yes, I was the third from the end, and no, uh, <laughs> it was a it was a dancing tree and a teddy bear, um, but it was it was great and and made some nice connections through that show and uh, from that did Guys and Dolls did the national tour of that and then again it's that snowball of what we do is you, you get to know people and work with people and from that. Uh, did cats and how to succeed here in the city and Fosse on Broadway and a bunch of stuff. And when was the moment where you said, okay, I, I no longer want to just do these steps. I want to design these steps. Do you remember like when that happened for you? I do. It was, uh, I knew the seed was planted uh, when I worked with Chris Chapman on Guys and Dolls. There was a way that he had of, of working. Actually, I think it was both. It was, it was Chris Chapman and, and, um, Scott Salmon, uh, who did the Christmas show, they both they both were so inspiring in different ways. Like Chris was an incredible storyteller, incredible athleticism, incredible detail, and then Scott was from the school of, of just showmanship and and comedy, and 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 their their touches were completely different, but both so so inspiring. And um, I worked with them in the same year, but it, I, it was more Chris. But they both had a huge impact on me, and I think it was it was Chris and. Um, I knew I would perform, but I knew it was it wasn't going to be long before I, <laughs> I did my toe in the other waters. I could feel it. So, how did you start that process of transitioning from dancer to choreographer? It, you know, it's interesting. I I, I assumed that there would be a process, like I'd, I'd be an 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 assistant dance captain, and then a dance captain, and then an associate on someone's show, and then help collaborate with someone. And this chance coincidence opportunity happened where I did a number uh, for Gypsy of the Year uh, for Broadway Cares. It's one of the annual fundraising events that two that they do. They do two a year for, for the Broadway community. And uh, and I did a number for Cats for Gypsy of the Year. And they liked our number and asked me to do the opening number of the Easter Bonnet the, that following season. And again, there, there are all of these kind of stars were aligning. We had the we had five of the original Ziegfeld Folly ladies come back to the which was the they were opening the new Amsterdam stage with that with this show so we brought five of the Ziegfeld Follies women back and and Rosie O'Donnell was a guest judge and it was just all of these great kind of things were happening and the number went off really really well and from that uh, Rosie O'Donnell offered me a spot to choreograph for her TV show which at the time was really big and I had never done TV but I'm a hard worker and <laughs> I figured it out really fast. But, um, but it was, I kind of, it was from then it just doors open because of that opportunity that I didn't expect to happen for years. So I was performing, I was still doing cats at the time and I was double duty and I was like doing her show in the early morning and doing the show at night. And, and that kind of kept up for a few years. And then Bat Boy came along and, um, 
I'm not going to this doesn't sound too different from what's happening now but but uh but that but then Bat Boy came along and it was my first kind of like New York musical and I knew it had the potential to be this really great show and and special and and I I kind of wanted to give it my full full focus so I stopped performing for a bit and I just did did that which was great uh, and then that led to Tick Tick Boom and and so it it and then that snowball started kind of going really quickly so I just just kept going we're going to get back a little bit to your history, but since you mentioned television and that you figure you'd never done TV before, what are the differences between designing dance for the stage and for television or film? You're doing a lot of film work now as well, right? Yeah, it, it's it's different in that on stage it's a, it's a it's a different craft where you have to you have to tell the audience member where to look. If you're trying to tell a story on stage, you have a proscenium, a box that you're doing it in. And so, if if I want to make sure that they're following this couple's story, then I need them all to look stage left when they need to look stage left to follow that couple in the midst of this dance number or something. So it's it's a much bigger lens you have to work in. So you always have to tell the audience where collectively to follow your story where in film you get to you literally get to tell them where to look you get to pan right when <laughs> something important's happening or you, you get to go 360 degrees around a, a body to get a shot or a look so it's they're both fun and, and challenging in their their own ways it's definitely it was interesting going from stage to tv slash film because um you're used to just working in that kind of you're directing the eye all the time and you're trying to tell a story in that way. So to have that kind of endless kind of, well, we can shoot from the ceiling. We can have the perspective from their feet. We can have, it just, it's that many more options and things you have to think about, which is great on that other hand, because it's really, it's, it's fun to, to play with, with all of those different options. So how do you prepare for a project? Like, well, we'll talk about Alter Boys, right? My first show, you, you hear your, you're doing a boy band musical. Like, what's the first step for you? And how does that differ to, like, you're, oh, you're doing King and I. Like, what, what are your first steps when you get a job? It's the, 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 the first definitely is, is uh, talking to the, to the director to, to kind of line up sensibility. I think that's the most, for me, that's the most important thing. Because I, I truly look at it as I'm an extension of them, like I'm there just as all the other designers to kind of support their vision for the show. So it's, you know, and making sure that whatever whatever they're hoping to get across with the show and whatever their bigger kind of idea is, that I'm there to support that. So it's it's that is always first and foremost, and then and then from there, once they tell me, like Alter Boys, you know, Stafford would say, okay, we're doing boy bands, but it has, but we're we're it's for real. We're not goofing this up like we're it's totally honest it's totally real the move's got to be great we're not making fun and so okay that's and that's a very specific direction to go in and then you you know just study that genre of whatever show that you're working on again for that case i watched a million <laughs> sync videos and factory boy videos and concerts and, you know but then um so it's really just it's all of that it's research and i think you know the two the again those two specific examples and directors stafford and and bartlett who did South Pacific and King and I, you know, it's, I can go into a room with Stafford and I can have the number done and I can have the number completely prepared and set and kind of watch how it builds and, and uh, I don't say manipulate it, but you can, I can kind of like score the number and let it build and find where the laughs are. And I can kind of, and then present it to him and then he'll have notes and then we'll collaborate and go based on the, our ideas where Bart is completely opposite. Bart is, he just says, do your research and then we'll make it up in the room, which the first time I had to do that is, oh, it's absolutely <laughs> terrifying because you're I'm scared. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's like you're working, you know, South, and that was my the first time, you know, like in same thing, Bat Boy, like you go in and it's like, OK, I'm going to have this stuffed animal and this stuffed animal. And oh, that would be a funny, you know, like you just you kind of score it. And that's, you know, was always how I used to work. And then but with with Bart, though, he, you know, he said, just do all of your do all of your research and then come in because if you do your research then we'll have the answers and we and there are 40 people <laughs> looking at you to make up stuff on the spot and it's and you're like okay well we're all gonna march across the dune this way or you know or let's throw this person this way you know and, and you it's it was much more organic but it really opened my my self-confidence up and my um 
that if you do do the work, if you do do the research, if you do know the period, the style, that that ultimately you're creating a visual story. So it's going to come out. It's going to happen. And then once you have the blueprint, then yeah, you go back and you kind of you you rescore it. But um, but it's 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 definitely uh, opened my way of working because I used to go in T's crossed, eyes dotted, everything was done. And but it it gave it let me feel confident to walk into a room with actors, any collaborator really, and be like 75% done, or maybe I have a secret 90% done that they don't know about, or, you know, I think you it's... Cheated. I mean, it's you know, you cheated. Come on, you So it's, but it's, 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 it definitely opens me up to that, that kind of thinking, and it's, I think it's really helped me, just me as a, as a creative, it just, it's helped so much. Gotta be so scary, but at the same time, so rewarding and so fresh, right? Yeah. Yeah, because you're really, you're, and, and also you're you're creating it on the people in the room, and that's what's always you know. And I learned that too. It's it's not oh you go here. It's well, what let's talk about how you would get there and, and why. And and it's it's a it's much more, uh, it, it's it's richer. It's definitely richer. So, well, that's a very interesting point because I remember this from the times I've sat in a audition room with you, where you're one of those choreographers that seems to look at people and like oh don't worry I can get this actor is so good this singer is so good I can make them move well don't worry about it whereas other people I have to have this dancer that can take this leg and move it you know this far above their head so what do you look for when you're auditioning for people are you like oh they gotta have that pirouette it's gotta be a triple and three seconds or whatever the dance <laughs> I'm, I'm not a dancer obviously. Right, so yeah. what, do you, what do you look for I think again depending on the show I mean Overall, the thing that I look for is, is focus and being kind of present. And and when they walk in a room, if they're just connected, if they're if they're, there's something going on behind the eyes, because, like you said, I don't really. I mean, I'm not I'm not one who is uh, I'm not married to steps. I'm, I'm, I don't I don't think steps are the end all be all because you know it's about telling the story and it's about using the actors you have to tell it. It, to me so I don't care if someone kicks on their right leg or their left or if they can't do a triple I don't care I mean it, it's I'd rather create it on the bodies and on the actors that I'm working with and, and the, the the entertainment and the you know Newsies was very specific because of it was that was what it was you know you had 20 boys at that age physicalizing what they had to do and so yeah they're gonna do three turns or <laughs> seven or however many they wanted to do you know but but it was it, it was in that specific case then yes you go okay you need boys to be technically proficient i mean not mean for me but for their health and their safety like i'm not I, yeah i couldn't tell anyone to turn three times but if they're not going to do it well they're someone's going to get hurt so so it's so on, so for certain things you know you you have to check some boxes in that way just to to you know make sure that they can sustain an eight show week which is always hard but even more so it's just that are they present are they in the room with me did they listen to kind of the tone you know, okay, we're doing this and this is why. Are they are they getting that or are they just kind of in the room showing off? Or So, yeah, so mainly it's always just about being present. How much do you as a, we'll get to the director part in a minute, but as a choreographer, how much do you like to work with the writers on a new piece? Or how much do you think you should? I'll, I'll tell everyone a little story out of school, but... I, you know, on 13, I remember you coming to me and being like, hey, Ken, you should take a look at this. I've got some ideas, which I loved. And we ended up doing a lot of those ideas. Um, so how much do you like to be involved in that process? I, I love it as much as they'll listen, I, as much as anyone will listen, because I do think there are ways. I mean, everyone has thoughts and everyone has ideas. And I think there are also ways physically that I feel like I can contribute that might not be apparent to someone who's literally just thinking of the word and the lyric or, you know, I, I, there are ways to tell story in other ways that, that I think that, you know, I, I feel like I, I enjoy doing and I can do. So I'm always happy to, I love, I love being at the ground level just because it, uh, I don't know if I can, if I can help in any way, you know, as part of the team, I, it's better to get it on the ground level than kind of be kind of like have it go down the road that then it's like, ah, now what do we do at this moment? Where maybe it could have helped earlier in the process or something. Do you like working on new shows versus revivals, one or the other? I love them both. I, it's, 
I, I love I love getting to work on something new because you're getting to create and and getting to leave your your stamp on something like alter I mean like that was like one of the best gifts it was because it's like to get to do something like Alter Boys and and it's being done everywhere now and to know that like wow like they might be doing some of that because of me you know be, because they might be putting lambs on their hands because I wanted lambs on their you know like and that and that just feels really good to think that you leave a mark in that way, you know, and that's, that's really fun. But also the challenge of taking a revival and, 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 you know, and trying to like, what makes it relevant, how to put a new sheen on something. And, you know, and I like the, you know, I like the challenge of hearing a, a, a dance break and, uh, and hearing orchestrations and hearing a trumpet or hearing a, a, a an instrument in a, in an old, in, a, in an original dance break and go, I wonder what that was for and kind of making it mean something to me. And I, and so like I, it's like a little it's like a crossword puzzle in a way and so I they both have their really fun challenges and rewards so so Fosse had a style Bennett had a style does Christopher Gatelli have a style I don't I, I it's funny I you know I, I I feel like at the start of this when I was when I was starting out I was like what's my thing what's my what's going to, you know, my jazz hands or my gloves or my, you know, like I, but I don't, I think what I, what I hope it is, is that it's diversity. It's being that you can say I've done King and I and altar boys and whatever, you know, I, I love being able to dip into every pond and, and, you know, for example, when I, we did jungle book a few years back and we did, it was a, a fusion of like jazz and Barnatium, like in, in Indian dance. I mean, I've never done that. And it was great. And I love that part of the research of, you know, working with a teacher and learning what the steps are and making it my own. And then, so that it, it feels like I'm, it, it's never going to get bored, boring to me. It, it's always going to, I'll always be challenged by, by something if, if, if I, if I don't have a, a stamp or a kind of a style. So I love, I love kind of playing all over the place. Yeah, well, that your the diversity of the material you've done is quite amazing. I I will never forget that Bat Boy moment, and uh, and then to see something like South Pacific, it's just really incredible how you morph your style into many different productions. So now you're on to directing as well. Uh, why do you think before we even get into you, some of the Broadway's best musical directors started out as choreographers, right? Some of those names I just mentioned. Why do you think that is? Because I think there's a, a, a musical moves in a certain way that I think it just, if you're, if you're constructing a, a nine minute ballet or a nine minute piece, that's, you know, it's a song that goes into a dance break and you're telling story and you know, the, the, the whole it's it's how how do you continue telling the story and, and entertain and how do you how do you always keep that ball in the air and I think it just once you fall into the pocket of doing that and you understand how to do it I think it's just it just feels natural that you then move on to that next step of of uh, doing an entire show you know there's something that I think choreographers have that in terms of just movement and and the way something moves and the way something ebbs and flows and it, that I think it's just kind of I don't know it, it, it gets into your DNA a bit to to to, to do that and um, I don't know so you're obviously one of the busiest guys I know so you, and as an A-list director choreographer you're getting stuff thrown at you all the time will you do this I toss stuff at you all the time and how do you choose which ones you, to do how, what, what do you look for in a project now it's it's the it's what haven't i done what what is going to challenge me what's kind of, yeah like what's new you know just again t talking about you know like spongebob what that is complete like tina's version and what she's doing with that is completely i was like wow you you totally hooked me i'm i want to do this because I've never done this. And there are actually a bunch of things in the show, and I think it's out now. There's like a four-legged tap dance that the squid does. I've never done a tap dance for a four-legged person. I want to do that, you know? And and then same thing with Warpaint. It's like, you know, it's with Patty and Christine, and it's not a heavy dance show, but there's a style to it. And it's and there's, you know, big, leggy chorus girl, Arden women, who I, I haven't done that yet. I haven't done my my girly show yet I haven't done my so there's 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 kind of personal reasons for all of them uh, 
and mainly just to kind of keep challenging myself and keep I just keep learning and and uh, so or or working with certain people too is is definitely a huge influence with me I want to you know I love getting to work with I've never worked with Michael Grave before I've never worked with Tina before and, and I'm dying to and so I get to now and so that's that's really exciting and and that these directors still consider me and that they want to work with me and that's exciting still so we were talking about the diversity and then you mentioned your next two projects spongebob the musical <laughs> and, and war paint <laughs> and you're doing them almost at the same time right yeah. they're like on top of one another yeah yeah and a four-legged squid <laughs> tap dancing number mm-hmm. and then with patty in the afternoon yeah <laughs> I, I love it i love it uh do you like to come on to a show early or late like when did like Spongebob let's talk about Spongebob for mm-hmm. a second when did you come on to that show when did Tina approach you when were you approached uh, so for that uh, I was kind of one of the last people involved because Tina and she and she talked about this at our meeting she was so lovely but she said she said you know I this is kind of a first for me I normally do my own work I normally even choreograph my own stuff like the way the way she works in a room with actors she's very ensemble based and so she she gets things moving in, in, in a way that works for her. And so she said, but this is new and I know I have to deliver on certain other ele- in other elements. And so um, so I was kind of one of the last people brought on. So they a lot of the work had been like done and set and numbers written and structure. And not that it's not changing, but, but yeah, I was one of the last. Kind of and would you have preferred to come on much earlier? Do you like coming on late when a lot of that stuff is done? I like coming in earlier, but I think for this, I can see why, you know, she's dealing with, you know, Aerosmith and Lady Antebellum and, you know, like there's a different artist per song. And I think it's probably kept her sane, her saner to just do what she needed to do to get the show kind of as a show and then kind of fill in the rest of the pieces because what she's, what she's taken on is, is a lot. So, uh, so I, I, I completely understand kind of the order of things for this. Definitely. Do you read reviews? Mm, it depends. It depends. I do. If it's, do you mean my own or in general? In general, I, and then your own. I <laughs> so have, both. I I do, I guess I do. Mm-hmm. That's a good question. I do in that if I'm curious, what? How can I explain it? If I if I for, I'll, I'll start like with mine. If it's something that I really like, feel like I just poured my heart into gave everything I don't because I don't want to know I just I want to know how I left it in the room and on the stage and then whatever people think after that they they're going to think no matter what and so I don't want to read something that that could possibly be oh but that moment he missed that one mo- or something and I'd be like oh maybe it did and so I don't want to ever I don't want to know because <laughs> because I I will I will I will take in those things like I, I feel like I am collaborative and I will I will listen to everyone about anything because I just want it to be the best it could be so so hearing other opinions would could, could kind of could sway but if it's something that that maybe I know that oh, I I myself know I didn't like maybe oh I met, I might have missed it or I, did, I I just didn't click into this one for some reason I didn't or you know then I then I'll read it and then try to learn from that and go okay Maybe it, what was it me? Was it something else? Was it bigger? Was it timing? You know, so that's that's kind of my my take on all of that. Here's one of my James Lipton questions. You ready? Uh-huh. If the Smithsonian Institute <laughs> called you on your cell phone, just like Jesus, Jesus. from Alter Boys, <laughs> uh, and said, "Chris, we have room in our institute to preserve one of your numbers from one of the many shows that you've done," I wish everyone could have seen his face oh. right now on the podcast. <laughs> We got to get some video snaps of this. Uh, you, we could preserve one of your numbers. Which number would you want? It's one of those numbers you poured your heart and soul into that you wouldn't have read the reviews. Wow, that's so hard. Uh, Don't tell me they're all like your kids either. I'm not heard that one before. I know, right? <laughs> wow, um, that's really good because. Mm, That's really good because I, I would want it to to represent kind of what we were what we've been talking about, a kind of like the diversity of, of like I'd love to to do something with wit 
you know, like maybe something from Silence because it's so weird and funny and random. But then also kind of, of course, something from Newsies or something, you know, the new ballet that we did in The King and I at the top of the show. Like I'm really proud of kind of trying to crack out of Drone Robin's shadow for a bit and kind of like do something original and new. That was that was that that took a lot to do. And just for my own kind of <laughs> just self to, to kind of put on stage. Uh, so that's a, that's a really, that's a really hard one. Um, if I had to, had to, this is going to seem obvious, but that's why it's not, it's not so exciting, but it would probably, it would probably be seized the day. And ma- mainly because it, it was just one of those moments in the room that it was kind of, it just you could tell in the room that day that when they ran it the first time that it was just not that it was going to be even a great number or a great anything like that but part of my whole thing with that show was watching these boys who were that age in their like early 20s late teens or whatever that that they they were telling they were telling a story about young boys who were trying to make their way make a place for them at the table and to watch these, I get emotional talking about it, but watching these 20 boys doing the same thing in real time with skills that they were proud of, that they worked hard at. They know it. They never complained. You know, it's, it's exactly like they were the boys in the show and that they were able to kind of make a place for themselves in this community and kind of in the world doing what they loved. And to watch that come together that first time with that song at that moment in the show, it just... It, it just felt like one of those moments that like you can't get back you know like that it, it will be hard emotionally for me to be in a room and have something like that happen again because it was just just I just like I see all of them to today I just I still see them as those guys that like had that moment and that moment together so that was really really special must have reminded you a little of you of course at that age yeah I mean a little bit it's like you because it's like why you I mean I knew what they were doing like I knew what they were like when I I was talking earlier about being at Radio City I was 17 years old and Scott Salmon gave me this big feature you know who knew back then you know and but I but I knew what they were doing I knew that it's like I know there aren't many places for you to get to do what you think makes you special or what how you feel special and what you have to give like that but this is that opportunity and there are 20 of you you know it's just it was that kind of beautiful thing so well it was an incredible number and i'll never forget being in that audience and just hearing the unbelievable ovation when it ended so good choice thank you the smithsonian (laughs) approves Uh, what about producers obviously you've worked with a diverse group of producers from the lincoln center the nonprofit institution to me to disney big commercial behemoth what what do you like the producer's involvement to be on a show? I love their involvement. I love because I feel like, I mean, and you know, like, of course you, I mean, like, even you, like talking about you specifically, like you, you're behind something because you're passionate about it, you know? And I, and I love that. And I love when people, it's not like, oh, we're just going to do this to do it. We're going to do it because we're passionate about doing it. And I love seeing that. And I love you. I, I just I love when producers are in the room and they are vocal because again even as even down to the director what I was saying earlier like I'm there to support the director's vision the director hopefully is chosen because the producer wants that person to lead their ship the producer is saying I I want to bring the show to Broadway or to wherever and I think it's going to be best led by this person and then we all kind of follow. But I, I mean, but it starts at the top. It starts with the producer saying, I have an idea for a show. I want to do this show. Here's who I want to do it. And and I feel like to have them in a room after some draft goes up of something and to hear their thoughts, that's the reason why we're there. And I love I love them to participate and challenge and and question. And I it's it's a, it's an it's another important ingredient, I think. How do you think the musical has changed over the last 20 years since you started doing this? Well, it's just, it's so, you know, I say, I I just feel like we are at the best, we're just in such a great time right now. I feel, you know, and and where where kids will say, just on the choreographic side, kids will say, well, what classes should I take? What should I, it's like everything right now, take everything, don't, I mean, 
it, it, that's, and Broadway is so diverse right now. There's so much going on. I mean, even back to like Fela, I mean, you can, you can quote, I mean, you can look through any season recently. It's not the norm. It's not what we grew up watching, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a great thing. And we still get glimpses of that, but I love how just, it's, it's just, it's such a wide playing field and it makes it that much more accessible to people. And I think more people I, I feel are coming than ever before. I mean, I, you know, bef- 20 years ago, you couldn't even find enough shows in, in, to fill theaters for a new musical. And now there are people lining up at theaters. I mean, it's, and that's exciting. It's exciting to be a part of that time. And I feel it, it's, I don't know, I'm just really happy to be in it now because I feel like we get to kind of put a new stamp on things and we get to kind of, I don't say create our own rules, but we, we, we can make new rules. You know, this other, this dance play I'm working on, you know, it's, it's like, there's nothing like it. And the fact that it's running and it's snowballing and happening, you know, is who would ever have done that years ago? And I mean, maybe Fosse with dancing, but I don't know. I'm not, my name is not Fosse, that's for sure. So who's going to take a chance on that? But now, you know, it's like people love dance. Dance is really out there. People are, you know, so yes, people are now asking for it. People do want to see, you know, these 10 different forms of dance in one show on a Broadway stage by these phenomenal artists. Like, it's something that I don't know if I could have presented that 10 or 15 years ago. Now, yeah. And that's, and it's, it's, it's great. It's a great time right now. So tell everyone a little bit about that. It was just done in Southern California, right? Yeah. Uh, so just tell everyone. Oh, if, oh if yeah, sure. Know. It's called, it's um. We're actually changing the title, but it's uh. It, it's. Can you break the new title I, here I on the podcast? Could, it's not. I wish I could. I can't. Not yet. Not yet. But uh. But it it was called in your arms, and it's um. Stephen Flaherty is, is the composer, and basically what it is, we took ten playwrights, uh, Terrence McNally, Douglas Carter Bean. Oh my gosh, it's all over. The never Dodge. heard it's, of yeah, any never of those heard guys. Of Chris, Chris Rang. We even got Carrie Fisher to write one. Uh, Marsha Norman. I don't want to leave anyone out. Alfred Urey. Uh, oh my gosh, Neil Cruz. Everyone. I mean, that just and the uh, yeah, and the ten of them are just incredibly diverse. And we tell it solely through dance on no spoken word. And it's just and it just hits at, it just hits you. It's about 90, 95 minutes, and we we've condensed these short plays that are told solely through dance. And it's to me, it's Steve's best score ever. It's stunning, and um, and it's just it's it's been doing really well. And it's and to see people accept, like again, we're in Southern California. You know, it's not even New York, and we got like their highest approval of any show there. We got all their feedbacks and their all well, that stuff that they they tell you at the end. But and to think that those crowds, even out there, would sit through a wordless musical is I mean I don't know it's just it's it it blew I was like I was sitting there ready for people just to kind of like slowly creep out and like and not be I was I wasn't going to be offended I just was think you know just kind of preparing myself for okay this is definitely something new but they didn't and they stayed and they stood and they were just hungry and it was and and it just kind of it just keeps proving that it, it's just we're in a new time and it's kind of it's really it's exciting well, it's exciting to have people like you leading us in that new time. So, you know, stuff like that wouldn't happen without artists like you. So I, I, I'm a big believer in people like you taking chances and saying to producers, hey, I want to do a wordless dance piece. So you mentioned advice to dancers, take everything. What would you advise to one of those dancers that comes up and says, but I want to do what you do one day? What would you tell them to do? Uh, I usually say just to take take every opportunity you can in with regards to just getting your work out there anyway. If it's a benefit, if it's if any if you have any outlet to get your work done, I, I just think you have to d- just do it no matter what it is because you learn from every single one. Like and I if I didn't you know even I mean kind of starting out was a lot of just the benefits and things like that but if I didn't have to figure out how to like do you know a lot with a little you know that's kind of that was my whole how I started out was and now you know (laughs) when I actually had budgets for a show I still kind of don't know what to do sometimes because it's I I just don't you know I, I kind of I kind of launched off kind of doing you know poor theater and just kind of creating 
silence and, and Godspell. It's like all of these fat boy, here's a stuffed animal, go. It's like, you know, it, it's it's taking a little and trying to do a lot. And But you learn, that's, that's how you learn. Like, but I wouldn't have known I had that in me unless I did these benefits and kind of like, well, here's your hundred dollars to go buy props for something or, you know, it's, and that's, but you, and you learn scheduling conflicts. You learn how to juggle your time and how to work with a director and how to work, you know, it's, it's, it's all about just working with people and getting used to still doing your best work, but with, uh, just different variables thrown in. Well, the director now wants everything facing upstage and Oh, but my formations, you know, it's like, no, no, no. Okay. How do we do this in a way that still maintain, you can still entertain, but yet kind of support that vision and, try, you know, so it's, it's a lot of just working with people and just, just doing it. I think you, it's what, it's hard to study something like this. I think I really like, I grew up watching all of those MGM musicals and all of those videos. I mean, that was, you know, before the days when I was growing up and the days before YouTube, you know, that whole thing. But I didn't. We didn't have this outlet to kind of just see, you know, that we didn't have these kind of dancers on TV, you know, in Star Search. Which you were on. Yes. Which, and you were a winner. Yes. So we had that. <laughs> Is the Star Search on YouTube where you went? No. It's not? No. God damn it. I'm going to no. find that somewhere. You were a grand champion, if I yes. remember correctly. Yes. Amazing. So we did. So we had a little bit. Um, and then I was, uh, yeah, champion that, but, um, but, but it's different because you watch those old MGM musicals and you watch these great numbers and yes, they're great to learn storytelling and how to learn just how to build a number and how, what you can do during a dance break and all of those, they're, it's all important. But then like when you have to collaborate though with your team and you have to, you know, look at the, t the length of a show and how long it's running and what to pair back and are you willing to let go of your some of your dance break are you so there's a, there's a lot of a lot of negotiating and a lot of it's not just the art you know and I it's like you wish it was but but there's a lot of things that fall into that as well but it's but it's learning how to I think take all of those things and again still create and still love what you're doing and still contribute with all of these kind of other things and it's definitely it is possible you know we, we do it all the time so it's but it's when you're when you're coming through and coming up it's it's it doesn't seem like it you know it's it's harder to kind of figure that out and then once you figure it out it, it's it's easy anything as you look back over your career so far you do differently uh, I don't I mean I I was you know it's funny I when I started out it was when I was when I was doing cats and I did that number for them at the time I remember thinking like I'm going to big bring dance back to Broadway. I'm going to, you know, rah, 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 you know, and, it was, and I think starting out like I did, like my first, you know, I consider kind of my first, I mean, aside from the benefits and whatnot, I consider my first thing, bad boy and then tick, tick, boom, and then altar boys. And then, you know, I'm working on things that they weren't the big dance shows. They weren't these, and you had, I had to, I had to figure out how to attack them in a different way again, still entertain and still tell story, but in a way that I learned how to talk to actors. And I think that was the most important thing. Actually, I can go back and tack that onto my other answers is, you know, when you're working as a choreographer, you have to learn how to, how to, to, to talk to your cast and in, in ways that, you know, a non-dancer can understand. It's like, it, you know, I learned that right off the bat. It's not about doing this arm or doing this kick or doing that turn. It's, you're doing that turn to get you to the feather duster to sweep up, you know, something because it's, you always, it, it always, everything has to be motivated and, and, and how to speak to actors that way. It's, it was, um, I think, I, I don't, I don't know where, to be honest, I don't know where I would be if I kind of just launched myself. I, I kind of, I wouldn't want to know because I, I, I think the way that that path led you know, and even after, and it's funny, even after doing, you know, Bat Boy, Alter Boys, all of those, then the next ones were Sunday in the Park with George Revival, The Ritz, South Pacific. I still hadn't done like a big dance show. It was, but at the same time, again, I don't think Newsies would have been Newsies unless I had done those other shows. Like, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, there are elements in there from all of those shows. And, and so I'm really, I'm really happy, I'm really happy and kind of proud of of, of this kind of journey. So I, I definitely, I, I think I'm, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Last question. I want you to imagine that the genie from Aladdin, this is the James Lipton question number two, by the huh? way, 
the genie from Aladdin comes to you and says, Chris, I want to thank you for your unbelievable contributions to the music theater, this buffet of diversity <laughs> in types of <laughs> dance that you've given to us from three-person musicals like Tick, Tick, Boom to massive revivals like South Pacific. I'm going to give you one wish to thank you for all of this. What's the one thing that drives you so crazy about Broadway that keeps you up at night, that gets you mad? You're one of the nicest guys in the business I know. What gets you fuming about this business that you would want this genie to change with the snap of a finger? Oh, that's a really good question, too. Um, oh, that's really hard. There's a bunch, but... I guess I, I guess at the end of the day, to to say it not in any <laughs> non political way or something like that, but I think it's just about being fair. I think if everyone could just be fair, uh, with regards to actors, with regards to our union, with regards to like just you know theaters and who gets what and when and why and who and how and zip and zap and you know I think if I think if if there was a way that this business could be genuinely fair in a way that maybe might not be so much uh, I think that would be a really great thing I concur well I want to thank Chris so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule you're working on like 16 things right now at once probably right now in your mind, you're constructing like, <laughs> as, as you're giving an answer to the genie question. He's doing dance steps in his head, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And thank you again for your contributions to the theater. I'm not a genie, but I've witnessed your work since Alter Boys, obviously, and Bat Boy. And uh, it's just been magnificent to watch all the stuff that you've done. And I can't wait to see what's next. And I hope we work together in four or five times or more. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, oh, and next time on the podcast, someone we both know and love, Robin Goodman, hey. producer of Bat Boy and Tick Tick Boom and Ultra Boys and Avenue Q and lots of other stuff. So she'll be joining us next time, everyone. Make sure you tune in. Thanks so much for being here. We'll see you then. Hey, everybody. Don't forget the Producers Perspective Pro is now live. Go to theproducersperspective.com. Join today. I'm going to be a producer. Look out Broadway.